Hello and welcome to your breakthrough hour. And I know today is a very special day and this program has been conceived and it's been brought to you that you can see a breakthrough in your life. Thanks for all those who are writing, saying that how you've been blessed through this program. I'm going to share with you today about how to be free from thoughts of loneliness. Freedom from thoughts of loneliness. I believe uh, as much as this world has become so much filled with entertainment, the mass media has populated and that's kind of a saturation and even communication technology has exploded. People can talk to anybody, not just uh, text, not just the voice, but even the video call from any part of the earth to any nook and corner. But I want to tell you, in spite of all this entertainment, all this explosive tourism industry and mass communication, the world has never been lonely as it is now. Man is so lonely. People are so lonely. There's so much of people going through depression. So much of people going to make uh, bad decisions, even so much so to, to even quit living. Today is a day. We're going to find an answer from the Word of God how to have freedom from thoughts of loneliness. Shall we go? Freedom from thoughts of loneliness is a very special subject God's been impressing upon my heart. Now, Psalm 102, verse 7, I lie awake and am like a sparrow alone on the housetop. These are the words of the psalmist, a sparrow alone on the housetop, awake, without sleeping, preoccupied with a lot of thoughts. Imagine that picture. That's the kind of picture, a real-life scenario for so many today. Now, loneliness, many times people get to think that it's a state of being alone. Though that might be partly true, loneliness is more than being alone. It is actually feeling alone. That's why the psalmist says, I am like... Uh, a sparrow which is on the rooftop. It's a feeling of being disconnected. People might still be around you, but you feel so disconnected. For example, a patient who is so sick on the bed with a lot of pain, people might be near that person, loving that person, caring for that person, but nobody can take or experience what that person is going through in the bed of sickness. That is feeling alone. People who studied with me have gone forward and gotten a good job and, and they're doing well. But the person has been left behind. I'm still struggling. Now that, that's a real scenario of loneliness. Somebody might say, Oh, people of my age in my community have grown up, they have got married, they have got the right family, they've got settled, but I've been left behind. That's a feeling of loneliness. So loneliness is more something that happens in the realm of the mind than the realm, than the natural uh, physical realm. Loneliness, you know, when somebody feels lonely, they, they might even have thoughts like this. I have nobody to talk to. I have nobody to share 
what I feel. I have nobody who can understand what I'm going through. Even nobody is there to reach out to me or to support me or to help me. So all these are feelings of loneliness. What are the effects of loneliness? You know, when people feel alone, there's a sense of fear that can build up. For example, children, when they're asked to go to a place to bring something in, from inside a room, and let's say that the room is dark, they say that, I'm afraid, I don't want to go there. Loneliness can put fear, not just children, it can, it can even do it for adults, especially the feeling of loneliness can bring fear about life, fear about tomorrow. In the beginning, of creation, one of the first issues that God dealt with even before the fall of man was the issue of loneliness. When God created the heaven and earth every other day, the Bible says that God saw it was good. But after all the creation was done and man was uh, made, Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 tells us, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. So God really felt that loneliness is not, is never a good thing. And God addressed loneliness. And today I want to uh, share with you how we can overcome, how we can get over these thoughts of loneliness. Number one, the Bible clearly says that God loves those who are going through a path of loneliness. When we turn our Bibles to the book of Isaiah, God talks about how he chose Abraham. In Isaiah 51 verse Two, look to Abraham your father and to Sarah who bore you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. Look at that. Abraham was not going to God, but God had literally come in search of Abraham in his loneliness and reached out to him and called him, blessed him and multiplied him. Obviously, he had his wife, he had his cattle, but there was a feeling of loneliness that he was battling. If you're going through that, God is reaching out to you. He loves you. The Bible is full of examples of people who were so lonely and God reaching out to them. Look at Jacob. He was the youngest son of Isaac, and he was running for his life. Here he was in a wilderness, a desert place, and just under the sky, it was night. He was sleeping with a stone under his head. Genesis 28, verse 12 says, then he dreamed and behold, a ladder was set upon the earth and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it, was 13, and behold, the Lord stood above it and said. Now it's so beautiful when Jacob was absolutely going through loneliness. He was just in the wilderness. Nobody to even call him under their roof. No food was served for him. But in the midst of that loneliness, God in heaven came in search of Jacob. And he made promises to him. And later on, we know that God blessed him to become a nation. Look at that. God is constantly behind people who are lonely because he loves them. Not just men. The Bible has the stories of women. Look at the life of Ruth. 
Ruth was a widow and she had accompanied her mother-in-law Naomi to a strange country called as Israel which spoke a strange language which she did not know and they had practices and a social system which she was not used to because she belonged to Moab great sense of loneliness she knew nobody in Bethlehem where she came but the Bible says that when she went out to pick food out of the harvest from the field the Bible says that it happened she stepped into the field of Boaz so it was not Ruth going to meet God's destiny but God reached out to a lonely Ruth who almost felt that her life was pretty over she did not see any future for herself I want to tell you if you are going through that loneliness God is reaching out to you because he loves you Psalm 34 there's a beautiful scripture usually when people go through loneliness there's a lot of broken heartedness that accompanies loneliness the Bible says in th Psalm 34 verse 18 the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit it's it's so amazing that people are left alone in this world because others don't need them or others don't want to reach out to them or even others though they desire to help they are not able to help but the Bible says that God is near to those who have a broken heart if you are going through that broken heartedness I want to assure you the presence of God is so near to you God loves you number two how to overcome the thoughts of loneliness understand that a season of loneliness is part of God's plan for your life and learn to get closer to God the Bible talks about different seasons for our lives Ecclesiastes chapter 3 there's a time for everything under the Sun that's what it says loneliness is part of God's plan let me read from Hosea chapter 2 and I want to read verse 14 and 15 therefore behold I will allure her will bring her into the wilderness and speak comfort to her let's pause for a minute now this her talks about Israel and God says I will bring Israel or I will bring my children or I will bring you as a child into the wilderness now alluring is actually attracting in other words God brings us into a phase of unexpected loneliness wilderness talks about a place which is uh, free of any human activity or human presence and uh, there's a lot of calmness there's a lot of silence it's just loneliness but God says I will bring you into that loneliness and speak comfortably to her the meaning of the word comfortably there in Hebrew is I will speak to her heart one of the greatest things that God really wants to do in our season of loneliness is to speak to our hearts and that is why when you're going through a time of loneliness focus on God usually in the wilderness you know in a desert there's just sand and sand and sand you don't see supermarkets you don't see malls you don't see recreation facilities is there sand everywhere in the desert 
And God says, I bring you into a season of wilderness or loneliness so that you will not be distracted. Your mind becomes focused on me. God wants your attention. My dear friend, my brother, my sister, God wants your attention to be riveted unto him so that you will hear his voice, so that you will have the revelation of what God has planned for your life and for your future. Look at Moses. He was thrown into wilderness for 40 years. He was a great prince of Egypt, but now he was just taking care of the sheep of his father-in-law. And there in the desert one fine day, there was a bush burning, but not getting destroyed. When Moses went near that bush, focused his attention and listened, God spoke to him and gave him the revelation of his plan, a great mandate that he had concerning raising Moses as a deliverer for Israel from the bondage of Egyptians. If you're going through that loneliness, this is the time. Let all your focus be on God. Remove every distraction. God wants your complete attention because he's going to speak to you. And now what happens when God speaks in the midst of our loneliness? Always the voice of God turns the barrenness into fruitfulness. That wilderness becomes a garden. Let's read the next verse in Hosea chapter 2. That is verse 15. I will give her, her vineyards from there, and the valley of Accor as a door of hope. Look at that. In other words, God says, I will give you what is destined for you, her vineyards. In other words, the fruitfulness which bears your name will be delivered unto you. No more barrenness in the name of Jesus. And not just that, the valley of Accor in the, in the book of Joshua talks about a valley of curse where Achan and his uh, families were uh, stoned and they died because of their rebellion. And that means curses are broken and God says, uh, you have been weeping about your valley. You've not been able to go to the next phase. You've been facing stagnation. But I'm turning it into a door of hope. In other words, you are becoming a blessing to others. That people who are going to come in contact with you are literally going to enter into the plan of God through your life. Your life is going to manifest the hope of God, all because you have focused on God in your loneliness and received his voice. I'm excited. Aren't you excited? I know you are. Thirdly, one of the things that we need to do to overcome the, the, the feeling of loneliness I'm going to continue on this even in the next episode. But today I want to finish with one thing. Fill your mind with the word of God. One of the things that when we go through loneliness, we get to do a lot of self-talks. Because you have a lot of moments of calmness. You are alone. There's, not, there's nobody near you. So your mind begins to generate a lot of voices. There may be voices of doubts. How am I going to get through this? There may be voice of fear about something, fear about how you're going to meet your need, how you're going to pay off that debt. How are you going to have your future? All kinds of thoughts, they keep on running. There might be even negative thoughts. 
negative voices. That's why you need to learn to draw your strength from the promises of God. That's something very important we need to do in times of loneliness. Don't go in search of the words of people. Don't look at who can send you an encouraging text. Who can give you an encouraging statement or a comment? You know, these are all human tendencies. But the Bible has a lot of promises, literally thousands of promises. And I tell you, nobody or nothing on earth can strengthen you the way that God can strengthen you through his promise. So get to the word and begin to draw literally, you know, like how people draw water from a well. Begin to immerse yourself. I want to give you a few scriptures. Isaiah 49 verse 15. Can a woman forget her nursing child? and not have compassion on the son of her womb. Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. And the next verse tells us that I've engraved you in the palm of my hand. Look at that. God is promising you, I have not forgotten you. You have not been written up from my books. Your life is right before me. In the palm of my hand means I'm looking at you. You are so close to my sight. You know, when I look at my palm like this, it's so close to my sight. In other words, your life is right before me and I'm not going to forsake you. I'm going to fulfill whatever I've destined for you. Now, these kind of scriptures, you begin to draw your strength, your assurance, you feel so important. You feel so valued. Another scripture is given in Isaiah 43. I know there are many, many, and I want to encourage you. Get to the Bible. Find out those promises. And it says in verse 1, it says about how I have formed you. Fear not. I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. So God is telling, do not fear. I have formed you. I have literally brought you forth in this earth. And you are mine. You belong to me. I have redeemed you with my precious blood. Now verse 2 tells us, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. Now this is very interesting. People may throw you into the waters or floods, but God says, I'll be there to catch you and I will walk with you and make you pass through the waters. And the remaining part of the verse, when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burnt. In other words, people may even, maybe your closest people might kind of walk with you in the flood. But nobody gets to walk with you in the fire. In other words, when everybody has left you, I be there in that fiery furnace to bring you through. What an amount of strength these promises give us. So as you learn to draw your strength from these promises, God's plan for your life becomes real. And I want to tell you that God is going to bring you out of that loneliness and today is the day to break free from the chains of loneliness and helplessness and hopelessness and God is moving you into a place of fulfillment and strength and I want to pray with you and if you're out there and you're going through a valley of loneliness I tell you God is reaching out to you. I want to pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for when you created man, you broke the chains of loneliness in his life and brought 
blessing and fulfillment into his life. So also I pray for every child of yours, every person who is going through a valley of feeling alone, the sting of feeling loneliness because of a broken relationship, because of loss of someone who has been so close, of loved one, because of a temporary separation, because of a marital breakdown, because of being rejected by people, being misunderstood by people, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus, today, may your presence surround your child. May that pain of loneliness be completely uprooted. I command those shackles be broken and I speak and declare, go free in Jesus' name. May your children go free from the shackles of loneliness. I pray may their thoughts be filled with your love because you are in love with your children and you have come to meet them at the point of their needs. No matter even if it is a physical condition, may your healing flow. If it is an emotional condition, heal that hurtful heart. Maybe because of the abuse they have gone through, May that be healing and every sense of worthlessness be healed as you speak to your children. Speak to your child that they are precious to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for something is happening right now. And that place of emptiness is filled by your glorious love. For your glory, I thank you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Wow, oh, what a joy. I know God has touched you and if you have felt that this word is for you, I want to hear from you. Please call the numbers on your screen. Let us know how God has touched you. And you can also email at pastorpaul.prayer at gmail.com. And if you have a prayer request, do send it. I would like to pray with you. And and right back and our prayer volunteers are waiting for your call and I know God has blessed you next week we're going to see the second part of this message of how God turned the loneliness into fruitfulness and how he can turn your loneliness into great fruitfulness don't miss next week same time same day God bless you <music>